Hi, everyone. Um, I have something to read to you. This time I didn't write it entirely myself, so I suppose it's a little unusual, but bear with me. Um, what is biodigital convergence? Well, according to Policy Horizons, the Canadian government's think tank for exploring trends, disruptions, potential realities and assumptions, in order to identify new challenges and opportunities, um, and whose self-professed foresight helps the government assess what the future might look like, as well as the policies and programs needed to achieve our goals for society. Um, the following is, and I quote again, one of many possible narratives depicting some of the innovations in a future biodigital world. And I would like to thank the writers of the Policy Horizons website for making it possible for me to make a video without having to come up with a single joke myself. So this is them. This is their um, look into the future. I wake up to the sunlight and salty coastal air of the Adriatic Sea. I don't live anywhere near the Mediterranean, but my AI, which is also my health advisor, has prescribed a specific air quality, scent, and solar intensity to manage my energy levels in the morning, and has programmed my bedroom to mimic this climate. Um, presumably when they go out to um, work for the greater good and uh, the other person comes in from their shift and takes their bed and bedroom, they can reprogram it, or it will already be programmed, to know when that's going to happen and create whatever climate is um, best suited to the next occupant of the room. Anyway, the fresh bed sheets grown in my building from regenerating fungi, and you know that they're grown in the building <laughs> because the person never gets to leave the building. Anyway, um, the fresh bed sheets grown in my building from regenerating fungi are better than I imagined. I feel rested and ready for the day. I need to check a few things before I get up. I send a brain message to open the app that controls my insulin levels and make sure my pancreas is optimally supported. I can't imagine having to inject myself with needles like my mother did when she was a child. Now it's a microbe transplant that auto adjusts and reports on my levels. Now, <laughs> well, there's so much wrong with that. But anyway, you know the bit where you send a brain message to open the app? I thought, you know, your brain, you know, does that more smoothly. Your brain can just go to the thought. But, you know, you could always put something in between there and make the process slower, I suppose, if you wanted to. Um, everything looks all right. So I check my brain's digital interface <laughs> to read the dream data that was recorded and processed in real time last night. My therapy <laughs> analyzes the emotional responses I expressed while I slept. It suggests I take time to be in nature this week to reflect on my recurring trapped in a box dream um, and enhance helpful subconscious neural activity. Um, so genius suggestion there to feel better, go and spend some time in nature, but also trapped in a box dream. These people actually do have a sense of humor because if you know you did live in a smart city stack and pack, that's exactly what you would be um, trapped in a box. Uh, my AI recommends a forest day. I think, okay, and my AI neural implant do the rest. Uh, again, that's like, you know, you think, okay, and then something happens, whereas you used to not have to think, okay, you could just know that you knew it was okay and move on to the next bit, do you see? Anyway. The summary of my bug pot surveillance footage shows that my apartment was safe from intruders, including other bug bots. The attack of the bug bots last night. But it does notify me that my herd of little cyber dragonflies, these are the only things I think I could probably put up with, cyber dragonflies, how cute, are hungry. They've been not enough that I would sacrifice humanity in order that I could have a little herd of cyber dragonflies, just to clarify there. They've been working hard collecting data and monitoring the outside environment all night, but the number of mosquitoes and lime carrying ticks they normally hunt to replenish their energy was smaller than expected because everything in the outside world is terrible. It's full of mosquitoes, lime carrying, you know, man eating ticks, etc. Um, 
with a thought, I order some nutrient support for them. Now, I gather nutrient support is what we're going to be calling food in the future. Um, my feet hit the regenerative carpet <laughs> and I grab a bathrobe, although I don't need it for warmth. My apartment is gradually warming up to a comfortable 22 degrees as it cycles through a constantly shifting daily routine that keeps me in balance with the time of day and season. This was probably written before they were sort of made really aware of carbon credit allotments and stuff, or maybe they just want to blur the lines, you know. Anyway, something for the writers to think about. Building codes and home energy infrastructure are synchronized and require all homes to be auto-regulated for efficiency. So we're going to police all your homes because houses and buildings are biomimetic and incorporate living systems for climate control wherever possible. They are continuously filtering the air and capturing carbon. Uh, there you go, there's the carbon thing. I checked my carbon offset measure to see how much credit I will receive for my home's contribution to the government's climate change mitigation program. It sounds like an absolute doozy of a future, doesn't it? Not at all, big brother. Not at all, 1984. Not at all, terrifying. What are you thinking? Anyway, as I head to the bathroom, I pause at the window to check the accelerated growth of the neighboring neighboring building. Yeah, check the accelerated growth of the neighboring building. So the next building is growing. Biological architecture has reached new heights. Do you see what they did there with the sentence? And the synthetic tree compounds are growing taller each day. To ensure that the building can withstand even the strongest winds and to reduce swaying for residences on the top floors, a robotic 3D printer is clambering around, that's a bit my children like the best, around the emerging structure and adding carbon reinforced biopolymer, strengthening critical stress points identified by its AI supported sensor array. I am glad they decided to tree the roof of this building with fire-resistant, genetically modified red cedar, since urban forest fires have become a concern. Oh my good lord, where do you even start with that? Um, genetically modified red cedar, um, <laughs> since urban forest fires have become a concern. While I'm brushing my teeth, Jamie, my personal AI, asks if I'd like a delivery drone to come and pick up my baby daughter's tooth. Sorry, my daughter's baby tooth, which fell out two days ago. The epigenetic markers in my children's teeth have to be analysed and catalogued on our family genetic blockchain in order to qualify for the open health rebate. So I need that done today. So that's really scary, guys. You know, the epigenetic markers in my children's teeth have to be analysed and catalogued on our family genetic blockchain in order to qualify for the open health rebate. Uh, yes, right. I replaced the smart sticker that monitors my blood chemistry, lymphatic system and organ function in real time. It's hard to imagine the costs and suffering that people must have endured before personalized preventative medicine became common. So this is the, the, the next rip off. Um, but any, also, I'll admit that it sounds gross, but it's a good thing the municipality, I guess that's what we're calling it now, the municipality samples our fecal matter from the sewage pipes. Oh, my children actually like that bit too. Boo! It's part of the platform to analyze data on nutritional diversity, gut bacteria and antibiotic use to aid with public health screening and fight antibiotic resistant strains of bacterial infections. So that's the extent of privacy invasion. Even your poo will not be private. Um, supposedly, the next download for my smart sink will allow me to choose a personalized biotic mix for my dechlorinated drinking water, but I will never be able to remove the fluoride. Um, today's microbiome breakdown is displayed on the front of my fridge as I enter the kitchen. It's tracking a steady shift as I approach middle age. Today, it su suggests miso soup as part of my breakfast because my biome needs more diversity as a result of recent stress and not eating well last night. So we're referring to our own bodies as our biomes now. 
Um, the buildings in my neighborhood share a vertical farm so I can get carbon credits by eating miso made from soybeans produced on my roof and fermented by my fridge. You noting the noticing the theme of, you know, it, it's possible to sort of uh, do everything that you need in order to live without leaving, leaving even your building. So forget the 15 minute neighborhood and the, the 20 minute neighborhood and, you know, the perimeter fence. Um, this is the future. My fridge schedules the production of more miso and some kimchi in preparation for the coming week. It also adds immune boosting ingredients to my grocery order because we're approaching the flu season and a strain that I'm likely to be susceptible to has been detected only a few blocks away. Oh my goodness, there's flu nearby in a nearby building. Oh my gosh, that's like, um, isn't it? That's like a... Uh, uh, a whole residence, they probably, um, you know, uh, isolate the building. Nobody would be allowed in and out or nobody would be allowed in and out. Anyway, can't do anything fun in this world. Okay, I take my smart supplement, which just popped out of my bio printer. The supplement adjusts the additional nutrients and microbes I need and sends data about my body back to my bio printer to adjust tomorrow's supplement. The feedback loop between me and my bio printer also cloud stores daily data for future preventative health metrics. So they're going to treat you for the stuff you don't even have yet, you know, because um that that's more um there's more money in that. The real-time monitoring of my triglycerides is important given my genetic markers. As my coffee pours, I check my daughter's latest school project, which has been growing on the counter for the past week. She's growing a liver for a local puppy in need as part of her empathy initiative at school. More stem cells are on the way to start a kidney too because she wants to help more animals. I grab my coffee brewed with a new certified carbon negative bean variety and sit on a couch for a minute. It appears the nutrient treatment I had painted on the surface of the couch and chairs has allowed them to rejuvenate. I'll have to try the treatment on my bio-printed running shoes as they're starting to wear out. Oh, wow. Is that the time? I only have, uh, sorry, I have only 10 minutes before my first virtual meet meeting. I tighten the belt on my skeletal muscular strength chair, lean back and log into my workspace. Do you see, you don't even leave your, your room to um, log into your workspace. You live in a box. You're trapped in a box stream. They totally know what they're doing. First, I get the debrief from colleagues finishing their work from the other side of the world. I shiver momentarily as I think about how intimately we're all connected in this digital biosphere. Then it passes. Let the day begin. Oh my good Lord people. And this is the bit at the end. This story may sound far-fetched, However, all the technologies mentioned exist in some form today. While they are not yet commercially available in the form presented here, a world where we take the interaction between biological and digital technologies for granted is already starting to emerge. They want you to believe that it's, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not possible for this not to happen, um, that it's inevitable, inevitable, that's the word. While this is a representation of technologies that could be part of a biodigital world, it does not represent the only plausible future. Rather, it is an imaginative vignette. <laughs> One man's imaginative vignette is another man's horror story, outlining the radical shifts that could take place within an optimistic biodigital future. Varying levels of access, adoption, and alternative realities could exist. Okay, and the important word there in the last sentence is access, because um, if you, you know, if varying levels of access, that means that, you know, some people can get in and other people can't get in, and it's based on what they've done or what they haven't done, and, you know, that's being recorded um, on their social credit score, um, or, you know, whatever they're going to call it in the <laughs> bio-digital future. This is what's in store for us, guys. If we don't, um, you know, manage to persuade everybody that this is what's in store for us, um, they're going to do this. Uh, the only thing that's going to stop them doing this is us standing up and saying we're not having it. Um, they're already well underway. 
So um, please have a visit of the Policy Horizons website um, and share any information that you get about biodigital convergence try to break it down so it's a little bit more accessible it really is just about you know m meshing humans and technology and other creatures and technology together so that you know the bad guys can turn us into cyborgs <laughs> um okay I, I love you thank you for listening to me bye bye